Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to answer software testing interview question 41. That is, what columns are present in test case template? Let me answer. In any test case template, we have this listed columns. They are test case ID, test scenario, test case title, predict sites, test steps, test data, expected result, actual result, priority, status, and comments. These are the several test case columns we generally have in a test case template. So why do we have to provide the test case ID? We provide the test case ID in a test case template to make the test case kind of unique from other test cases. For example, if you can see this document here, for the login functionality, there are around 23 test cases. Again, for the logout functionality, okay, this is a logout functionality, we have created around 11 test cases. Forgot password, another functionality has 25 test cases and so on. So to make each and every test case uniquely identify, identify okay, to make each and every test case uniquely identify from the other test cases, we have to provide this test case ID. For example, if you see one of the test case ID here, TC, TC means test case. LF means login functionality, okay? For login, I mentioned LF. You can provide anything, guys, okay? I just provide LF, 001. Whatever the second test case, it is also having TC underscore LF, but 002, which is having a different ID. This test case has a different ID. This test case has a different ID. What about logout? If I go to the logout uh, functionality test cases, the first one we'll see, TC means test case, but here LG is there. Here LF is there. Here, LG is there. I separated it. I made it unique, right? Because 001 will be common, TC will be common. Here also TC is common, 001 will be common. So the middle thing should be different. So to make this uh, login first login test case different from the first logout test case, I have to give a different wording here in between. That is LF I gave here for login functionality. For logout, I gave LG, okay? For logout, I gave LG. For forgot password, I gave FP. You see, TC underscore FP underscore 001. So, Hope guys, you understood what is test case ID. Unique ID will be provided for each and every test case in a test case document under the test case ID column, okay? Fine, next column we have in the test case template is test scenario guys, okay? For which test scenario you are creating this test case. For example here, all these test cases belong to the login functionality. So the test scenario is login functionality here, okay? You see everywhere login functionality, login functionality. The scenario name is provided here, okay? TS underscore 002 login functionality. For this high level scenario, high level test case, that is a test scenario. What is a test scenario case? Generally test scenario means a high level test case. Okay, it will be something like this. For example, if I take you here, here we have the test scenarios mentioned, okay? In this uh, test scenario sheet in this particular document, example template document, we have this uh, list of test scenarios for this particular application. There are around, how many test scenarios are there? Let's see. 31 test scenarios are there. For each and every test scenario, for this, for example, the first test scenario is about register functionality. Verify the working of register account functionality. The first test scenario, it's a high level test case. This high level test case or this test scenario contains 27 test cases. You see, if I go to the register page, we have around 27 test cases created. Similarly, if you go to the next test scenario and this second test scenario, TS underscore 002, is for login functionality. Verify the working of the login functionality. For this, how many test cases have created? 23 test cases. Let's go here. You see, there are around 23 test cases. So, test scenario is a high-level test case. Okay, test scenario in simple terms is nothing but a high-level test case from which we can derive multiple test cases. Okay. Now, next one is test case title. For each and every test case, we have to specify a title, guys. Okay, in less few words. Okay, at a high level, we have to describe this particular test case. Okay, we have to describe the test case at a high level. In few words, that is nothing but the test case title. If someone reads this particular test case title, they should understand what this particular test case is all about. For example, here, if I read this for you, test case title, verify logging into the application using valid credentials, okay? So that means we are going to perform testing by providing the valid credentials into the login functionality. Here, let's go with the next set test case title, verify logging into the application using invalid credentials. That is invalid email address, invalid password will Provide to the email address and password fields and try to log in. We should not, application should not allow us to log in. That is a test case. So hope you are able to get what is a test case title, right? High level description of the test case in few words is nothing but the 
test case title. The next one we have the prereq side case. Okay, before you perform executing this particular test test case with the help of these steps, you see there is a column like test steps. There are a lot of steps here. Before you run this particular test case by following these steps, okay, what are the steps I have to be ready with? Okay, what are the prereq sites I should be ready with? First, I have to open the application URL in any browser, right? Without opening the application URL, can I do all these operations? No. I cannot execute any of these steps without opening the application URL in any supported browser. And also, I should have an existing account created. Okay, if I have to verify whether logging into the application with valid credentials is working fine or not, just before running these steps, I should have an account created with some details, right? I should already have created an account with this application. And with that account details exists only, I can perform these steps. So this kind of steps we can write in the predict sites, guys. The steps which have to be performed before running this test steps is known as predict sites. Okay. So what should be performed before executing the test cases to execute the test steps is nothing but the predict sites. Now test steps, test steps as you can see here, each and every test case has some test case or test steps. We have to blindly follow the steps, guys. Okay. Click on my account means you have to click on my account drop menu. Click on login functionality means you have to click on the login option. Okay. By looking at these steps, you have to perform the operation on the application as part of verification or testing. So detailed steps. These are nothing but the detailed step for running this particular test case. These are the detailed steps that we have to follow to verify the test case. Okay. Fine. Test case instructions to verify the functionality of the application are nothing but the test steps in simple terms. Okay. Now test the data, guys. You see here we have the test data in order to perform testing of this particular test case. Okay, here we have to enter a valid email address into this email address field and valid password into this password field. So already I have to create an account, right? I should have an account created and with that account credentials, I should log in. Okay, with that valid account credentials, I should log in. So I already created an account, guys, with this uh, with this email address and password. I already created an account with this email address and password. If I provide to this steps while executing, then I will be able to verify this particular test case. So this is the test data that is required for running this particular test case or executing this particular test case using this test steps. Test data required to be provided while executing the test case instructions is known as test data in simple terms. Then expected result. As per the client requirements, okay. As per the client requirements, when I perform all this operation till here, what is expected? Okay. As per the client requirements, when I perform all these instructions, what should be expected? What the client is expecting here? Okay, according to the client uh, requirement specifications or whatever it is, what should actually happen? Okay, on performing these steps. So here, as you can see, expected result is another column, guys, where the client specified requirements are mentioned here in the form of expectations. User should be navigated to the login page. Okay, when I provide valid credentials and click on the login button, what should happen as per the client requirements or general? Expected thing is user should be navigated to login page, right? User should log into the should be navigated to the login page uh, when when someone clicks on the login option here verify er1 is in the second step when someone clicks on the login option user should be log, uh, navigated to the login page it's first one the fifth step after fifth step we have to verify er2 that is second step in this expected result once the user enters the credentials valid and clicks on the login button user should get logged in and taken to the account page okay like this expected results are there okay so what is the expected result as per the client requirements? Okay, on performing the steps, what should actually happen is the expected result. Now, the next column we have is the actual result column, where here we'll be writing our observations. Okay, so when we follow this particular steps, okay, when we follow this particular predict sites and steps and data and all the stuff, what actually is happening in the application? Okay, so when I really enter the valid credentials by testing this application, when I am verifying the application, let's say when I am verifying this particular application. After I click on the my account and select login, I am taken to the login page. One of the expected result is pass here. Okay. Now here I need to enter the valid email address and valid password, let's say. Okay, valid email address and valid password I have to enter. And then I have to click on the login button. Then I should be taken to which page? My account page as per the expectation. Actually, also same thing is happening, right? When I am verifying the application manually like this, whatever I shown you right now, the same thing is happening. User is navigated to the login page and user got logged in and taken to the account page yes you see as as, a, as you can see I, I got taken to the account page so actual result is also same okay when i am uh, expected is same and when i am testing the application i got the same result when actual and expected are matching then i'll give the status of this particular status column okay then i'll give the status column as pass okay if both are not matching i will just fail it so 
So what is actual result? What is actual result? We observed while verifying the application with the given steps. Okay, that is actual result. Now, status I just now showed you, right? Uh, provide the status of the decision for the test case. If this actual result that while verif while verifying the application, whatever the result we got is matching with expected result, then under the status we have to mention pass. Okay, otherwise we have to fail it. If you are unable to test, you have to say block it. If you have not tested it, you have to say not tested. Okay. So for now. Since actual result is matching with expected result, here under the status, we'll provide the result as or status as pass. Okay, the test case got passed. Provides, we have to provide the status of the test execution for the test case that got executed as either pass or fail or blocked or not tested. We have to provide. And uh, priority, guys. Next one is priority. So what is priority? You see, every test case is not not of the same level okay some test cases have the higher priority over the other test cases especially guys when you have less time okay for example you only have two hours to complete the testing and this many test cases need to be executed can you execute all the test cases all thousands of test cases can you execute no right so what we'll do beforehand while creating the test cases we'll, we'll mention this priority column and mark the test cases according to their priority levels okay so you see login with valid credentials is very important right every every user tries to create an account and tries to log in with valid credentials so higher priority so this few few uh, few test cases are high priority. Then this is you see third priority. This is the third priority. Like the different priority test cases exist, guys. Second priority, fourth priority, and so on will be there. Okay. So when you have less time for executing the test cases, what you will do is cleverly or smartly when you are performing the testing, you will only execute the high priority test cases first. Okay. If you have more time, then you will go for the next priority test case. Okay. Once you complete all the high priority test case, P1 test P1 test cases for all these functionalities. If you have still more time, then you will go with the P2. If you still have time, you will go to P3 test cases. If you still have time, you will go to the P4 test cases, like that. Okay. So based on the priority, we have to run the test cases. Which test cases need to be executed first is all about the priority case. Okay. We generally provide the priority column in the test case document to classify which test cases need to be executed first, which test cases need to be executed later. Okay. Based on the priority, we have to run the test cases. That's why priority column need to be mentioned in the test cases. Now coming to the comments. Last one is comments, guys. Okay. So here in the comment section, uh, we can either call it as comments or remarks or whatever it is. In the comment section, if uh, we can write any additional information, guys. Okay. We can write our observations. If you have any observations, you can write here. If you have any additional information you want to write, you can write here. Or if any particular test case fails, okay. If the actual result is not matching, whatever the verified result is not matching with the expected result, in that case, you will fail the test case under the status column. And why it is failing, you have to write here. It got failed due to the uh, we have to report a defect, and we have to mention the reason why it got failed. Okay. So, for example, even this particular test case got we are unable to test. Okay. Why we are unable to test? We have written here. You see, this kind of additional information or observations or uh, if any particular test case got failed, why it got failed? Such kind of information we have to write under the comments or remarks section of the test case. So, uh, so guys, uh, these are the different uh, columns we have in a generally we have this kind of columns in the test case templates. So hope guys you got the answer for this question. That's all for this session. In the next session, I'm going to answer another software testing interview question for you. Till then, see you. Bye bye.